spring is here, which means it's time for the annual round of maintenance. Uh, in this case, we are starting with number one while we are waiting for the parts for Kenny uh, to come in. So number one on the list is uh, my Gitan Testi. It's a uh, French brand. In this round of maintenance, we're going to give it a general cleanup because uh, there's a lot of dust on it from sitting and also uh, some basic maintenance like uh, uh, greasing the chain, cleaning the carb because for now it doesn't run because the carb is clogged. Uh, maybe a new spark plug and other than that, just a general cleanup. A little backstory on this bike. I bought this bike, I think six or seven years ago. Uh, put a picture up here from when I bought it. It's, uh, it was a failed restoration back then. It was in red, as you can see in the picture, but the old paint started cracking and looked like uh, a dried up lake. It was all crackly and, and a lot of tears in the paint. So we decided, my dad and I decided to restore it. It came back in the day in two colors, the red as it was and in this blue. We chose this blue because we thought it was the the prettiest. General design on this bike is pretty cool. It has a lot of these, I don't think it's for real weight reduction, but it, it has some style points. These holes, you can see them all throughout the bike, even in the rear swing arm and in the chain tensioner, the brackets for the springs. It's a pretty cool design. It's not the original steering wheel, uh, but it's the steering wheel it had when we bought it. It's also not the original exhaust. We still have the original exhaust, but I found this exhaust on a trade yard and I thought it looked pretty cool on this bike. It adds a bit of a Italian flair to it, although it's a French bike. Uh, driving this thing, it's a 50cc 3-speed. Uh, it runs all right, but it, it doesn't have a lot of power. The three gears on the steering, which is a real pain to to take first, uh, if you want to take first, you have to dislocate your wrists uh, in the upright position. And third is all the way down. So you have to dislocate your wrist in the other direction. So this is not really a bike for long trips or your wrist will hurt, your shoulders will hurt, everything will hurt. It's pretty short as well. I'm a pretty tall guy, so it's not the perfect bike for long trips. So. Let's get into maintenance. It's already starting to look a lot better. I'm going to provide the chain from some fresh grease and clean the carb out because that's probably why it won't run at the moment as you can see i did run a double fuel filter for this bike but it's not enough oh okay the fuel pet cock was apparently on reserve that probably explains the leaking cool so this tank is pretty dirty on the inside and i try i tried uh, running double fuel filter for a while so it would clean itself it runs fine for a while but if you let it sit for a while then the carburetor starts clogging up so basically to clean this tank i should drive it more which I would love to. <laughs> so removing the carb is pretty straightforward. Uh, remove the fuel feed on the other side. In this case, we take out the throttle slide and then by loosening this screw here, uh, the entire carb can slide off. There we go, one Delorto carburetor. 14.12, I think it's 14 millimeter. 
or is it 12? I'm not sure. Let's open this thing up and throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, there's a lot of grime in it. Let's get the float out because I don't like putting plastic things in uh, the ultrasonic cleaner because if they get too hot, they can melt. You can see the fuel needle to block the fuel feed. I think 90% of the carburetor, especially bicarburetors, work like this. Oh. This one, this one only has one jet. So this one is going here into the ultrasonic cleaner. And here there should be a, a little filter for the fuel feed. I think this is the one that gets clogged up most of the time. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. This can go in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. There's a lot of dirt and grime in, in this fuel feed. So basically the fuel feed gets clogged up and then the carburetor just starves out of fuel and the bike won't start or run. This thing can go in the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll get back in 15 minutes. I'm sorry for the background noise for, of the ultrasonic cleaner, but I just wanted to show you this while I'm, I'm checking it. The color of the spark plug is actually near perfect. It's coffee with a bit of milk, as we'd like to say here. This is the perfect color for a two-stroke uh, combustion engine. It means the mixture is spot on. Let's check spark. Ooh, plenty of spark. Yeah, this one will still work just fine. The Minarelli motors have a little peephole behind the logo. You can remove it and watch inside the transmission, or the clutch at least. And uh, I've refreshed the oil last year, and it's still, it's hard to see on camera, but it's still red, so the oil is still pretty good. So I'm not going to change it right now. Uh, this will be probably next year. So carb is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Looks pretty good. I went through everything with, with compressed air. So every channel should be clear and open. So now the only thing that's left is to put it all back together. and the air filter so now let's put everything back together let's put the slide in first There, everything is all mounted up again. Let's uh, open the fuel pad cock so the carb can fill with fuel. And let's see if we can get this thing fired. Oh, I had to check if this is the... These fuel filters have a direction. So if you mount them, check them. I think this is actually the wrong way around. Here, this filter has a, an arrow that points the direction of flow. 
so it's actually the other way around there we go should be better let's see if this thing will fire up let's add the choke and let's go stand by the throttle This is one of the worst ones to start in the, in the lineup I have in the garage here. This is actually one of the most unreliable bikes, apart from the Solex, that I have. Well, not reliable, but it, it just likes to die on you. Or won't start. Oh, there we go. go oh, almost come on I know you want to maybe no choke oh come on You asshole! Ah. This is a workout. Ah. Okay, put this thing on the ground so I can kick it with my foot because. <laughs> So we're back, it did really good, as you can see it's, a, it's an old bike, it, a, it has some issues, at RPMs it, it tries to shake itself apart, it goes in like some sort of resin and the whole frame starts shaking, that's probably why the front fender is uh, ripped in, in boats on both sides, the previous owner tried to weld it but the welds came loose again. You could also see the speedometer is all over the place super accurate it's actually the second speedometer we have the first one was so shaky that the needle actually broke off when hitting one of these tabs but i'm i'm super happy it runs again hopefully i can take this thing more out and actually get back home again because uh, it wouldn't be the first time i had to walk home after a ride with this so the first one in line is done next one will probably be fristy 
the SP7747 uh, or maybe the Royal Nor, we'll see. Probably Fristy because it's the easiest, it, it struggles with the same problem. It has a clogged carburetor, so fix will be pretty easy. So if you've liked it, uh, please leave a like, consider subscribing and see you in the next one. Cheers!